I got a call from Lewis Capaldi's agent saying we're going to try and get him to the wedding. Shut that mouth of yours because you're inviting Tom, Dick and Sally to our wedding. You have invited so many people. And... I walked into that cafe yeah. and I thought someone had died. <laughs> <laughs> or that you think we weren't getting married. Made that was close. actually on the cusp at, the point, know, at that but... point. The biggest surprise is I came home to the zap order that you ordered. <laughs> oh, God, if you dare. No, no, if you dare. No, I... My husband looked over and saw that the emergency was to retrieve... What? Was to retrieve a Sky Remote out of a stranger's asshole. <laughs> oh, my God! It's a long old day for the Lammy. For, for, are you the, are you're the Lammy best? You're talking in the third person right now. Yeah, I always talk in the third person. So it's a long old day for you? Yeah, like she's a target. <laughs> she's, okay. What, what, she's what? a businesswoman now. G go on, boss. What else is there in your life that I don't know about? Um, Just, ooh, chip, chip, chip. Photo shoots here, there and everywhere. No, I'm joking. What, what other things? I need to get my nails done because they've broken. Can I just tell you what I need to go and get done? I have something on my face. Oh, I can't bear it, please. <laughs> I need, I got something on my face that needs to come out. I, I don't know what this. No, it's just disgusting. It's, it's an not, ingrowing hair. It's not coming out. Go to out. a facelift and stop trying to get it with my tweezers because it's making me feel physically ill. I, it, it's really upsetting me. I have a... In... And we've made notes about these trainers. They need to be binned or worn to the gym only. Thank you and thank you. Uh, well, look, I think I look pretty cool. Yeah, Danny Zuko, I know what you're about to say. You look like Shaft. Who the hell is Shaft? <laughs> <laughs> Do you know who Shaft is? No. Well, it, it, you know Shaft is a some legend, obviously. He's a police officer, and he wore a black leather jacket. I think Danny Zico. Okay, you look. Like anyway, I have this thing on my face that I really need to get rid of, and I don't know how to get it There's out. There's a lot of things on your face. No. <laughs> Are you joking? No, you're beautiful and you're gorgeous, and your hair is just Chef's kiss at the moment. Honestly, you, lovely. Yeah, firstly, this Chef's kiss thing. It's it's Sorry, producer it's Jemima. Jemima. It's, it's producer Jemima. Jemima who said it, and now every single time you keep going Chef's kiss. No, sorry, <laughs> actually, Jamie, get with the picture. That saying has been going around for a while. He'd never heard it. Okay, well, but you can take the credit, Jemima. But I have, I have now. Keep continuously you, saying it. You are a bit of a boss at the moment, though, because like even you know. <sighs> You're telling me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you got a bit of like swagger in your step at the moment, girl. No, just a load of anxiety. He's gone. <laughs> she went on a Hindu. I don't know if anyone saw, but she went on a the Hindu. Mo there's co more content coming, so just I know you're worrying because you've not seen enough, <laughs> but it's coming. <laughs> Sophie said, "I was putting my head out the limo, and people were going Sophie, Sophie, screaming her name they as this limo." Weren't. They were like, "Who in the Paris. hell is this weird girl thinking she's Queen Elizabeth waving with some mime gloves on? I look like a mime." <laughs> I <had> these. <laughs> The whole thing was just, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I was channeling a real weird, like, tall, lanky, skinny Texas man the whole weekend. That's what I look like. Because I had this cowboy hat on, and I just kept reminding myself of, like, howdy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, listen. This episode is going to be good. And are you ready for it? Your hell is epic right now. Oh, no, leave it alone. Listen, you ready for it? Oh, I'm ready. Oh, Wait. you bet. You said you I'm, ready? I'm ready and waiting. Okay, what are you waiting for? You. Okay, let's get into the episode. Hello. <laughs> Hello, everyone. Welcome back to Nilly Weds Podcast, episode 56. Hello, everyone. Welcome back to Nilly Weds Podcast. I am Sophie Legg. It's honestly been so And I am married. You are, baby. I still get embarrassed calling you my husband for some reason. Why? I don't know. It just feels embarrassing. Why does it feel embarrassing? Because why do you have to refer to that? I like to just say Jamie. But they're like, who's that? I say my wife. And people ask me now. They go like, okay. And I'll be like, oh, my wife's coming now. I know. I'll, I'll start saying it. I still say my boyfriend, but I'll start saying my husband. The, 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 we were looking around a house and I said, he said, oh, do you need to speak to anyone? I said, oh, I need to call my wife. And then I FaceTimed you. Did you feel sick when you said it? No, I didn't. I felt amazing. I, I, you think that I, I love being married. Well, you didn't look like it on the wedding day. There were no <sighs> tears and I'll never go for it. This is the most upsetting me, thing. Sob, that, sob, sob. You, you keep thinking that when you looked at me walking down the aisle that I wasn't excited for it. I know the reason why, because you thought, fuck, I'm marrying a hoe because I was wearing a short dress. <laughs> and he honestly <laughs> just doesn't know the legit. He doesn't know that it's legit to wear a short dress to a civil ceremony. Like that was I'm the, wearing a mini dress. To I'm the being real honest with you. you that, that was the only like whoa, like a bit of like a yeah. Surprise. With the picture, what do you want me to wear? A prom dress? No, but that was the only bit that I was a bit like whoa at is that you were wearing a short little a mini Vivian Westwood dress. I know it was. You looked so hot. 
You looked unreal. No, 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 you can't call a bride hot. You did. You looked un- glowing. You 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 looked hot, honey. You looked hot as so anything. So did you, Carl Lagerfeld? <laughs> you looked so hot. Oh God, I'm going to be six. I'm okay, well, that. you Move did. On. You looked. You looked very hot. And and it was just when I looked and I turned and you were walking down the aisle. It just gave me a little bit of a fright. That's just what you want to hear when you walk down the aisle to your groom no. and you're the bride. <laughs> I frightened you. <laughs> you didn't, but frightened me in a great way. Because I was wearing a short dress. Did you think, oh no, my parents are going to think, oh, she's not that, <laughs> the right one to be married. No, not at all. My parents were over the moon and so excited. It's there was a none very of normal thing. I know, I know it is. It's a very normal thing. It's a very normal thing. But you, it was amazing and I, I'm so excited. You also went on your Hindu. And also, can I also just talk about this? You know, you, before you went on the Hindu, mm-hmm. right? It was like, you the way that you wake up in the morning mm-hmm. and the whole house has to wake up. You woke to get onto this Hindu. You're leaving at like five in the morning. Well, obviously you had to get ready. That has to stop happening because it's just... Well, hopefully I'm only having one hand, so it won't happen again. Okay, well, how was the Hindu? Tell me, talk talk me through. Let me, I want to hear from... <laughs> I want to hear from start to finish what happened, Go. No, not start to finish. Start yes. To all day. Start to finish. Go. Give it Wake to me. Wake up. Blow okay. dry hair. At five in the morning. My two best friends, Bella and Chrissy, text me. I haven't slept. I've been awake since 5.30. We're all, woo. Mm. Get to the train station. Yeah. Pop a bottle of champagne. Of course you do. Drink it like the legends we are. Yeah, legend. Get drunk. M- Melissa takes it away from me. She said, no more for you. Oh. So then I get tired. Okay. Okay. I'm like, how long is it? <laughs> Everyone lied to me and said the weather was going to be chef's, chef's kiss. kiss. I can't. <laughs> Jemima. Honestly, honestly. It's like you're losing the plot. <laughs> and I can't do without doing that as well. It's like I got... Why do you keep... It's a tick. Your two fingers next to you, look. When you kiss. walk down the... No, when I walk down the aisle, I'll just go, chef's kiss. <laughs> Okay, back to my house. <laughs> okay, yeah. So you're tired. So everyone takes the champagne away from me because I'm a bit of a lightweight and I clearly was embarrassing everyone. Yeah, yeah. I then I'm about to fall asleep, but holding it up for everyone. Yeah, okay, cool. Get there. Get in my room. Oh, you're not even there yet? No, land. Into the room. Every- <laughs> you were on a train. <laughs> yeah, land into Paris. <laughs> okay. Took longer than I thought. George, <laughs> Melissa again lied to me because she said she, she likes to keep me happy. She said it was going to be boiling hot sun yeah. and that the train was an hour. No, it's three hours and it rained all weekend. But So I packed nothing warm. Did you have nothing warm? No, no, skimpy, skimpy dresses. But that's okay. Um, land, everyone's room's ready, but not mine, not the bride. So quickly get ready. Okay. I didn't have the schedule, so I was mincing about in my dressing gown. Everyone was like, we're ready, we're ready, let's go. Yeah. And then lo and behold, I had to quickly whip my hair up, get ready. You look pretty. And so then- what are you wearing at this point? What do you put on? Oh, I put on a little sparkly cowboy number. Oh, okay, nice. Yeah. It wasn't a cowboy number. The hat made it a cowboy. I think it was just like a white outfit, right? No, it was a little sparkly dress. Yeah, it was not so flattering on, on the board, but yeah. it was. You okay. looked hot. No, if you call me hot one more time, I will divorce you. Okay. Well, I'll get, whatever, Ellie? Get get Ellie the lawyer on it and, do it and divorce me because I'm calling you hot. I don't think that's going to stand up in court. Um. Then we went in a limo. We played loads of R&B. Can I just... Get, hold, hold on there, cowgirl. Oh, thank you very much, Jamie, but the limos. No, so, ladies and gentlemen, um, Sophie went on a Hindu and I decided to, do, to to pepper. To pepper little surprises throughout the Hindu. That's what I There's wanted. There's only one pepper. No, there were two peppers. What was the second? The, ra- the table in the nightclub. Ra, ra, recipe 10. Yeah, that was not a good idea. Sorry, did you just go mad for a second? No. <laughs> what was that? The did you just suddenly was... lose... Ra, ra, recipe It's an joke. You don't know. And nor does the listener, because they weren't the there. The club was called Rasputin. Rasputin? Rasputin. Rasputin. And in the club, they go, rah, rah, Rasputin. <laughs> God, I wish I was there. <laughs> I, God damn it, I knew I should have been there. Can I just say something? I Can I just say something? We no, get... can I just say something? No, you say something. We get to the club, it's closed. No, sorry, it wasn't open, because we get there so early. We're like, oh, God, falling asleep. Go in. Jamie's obviously paid lots of alcohol. Half an hour, we're like, gotta go. I'm so sorry. I am so sorry. I paid for that table and you only stayed half an hour. But Jamie, come on. It was 1am and I was so tired. My poor little feet from dancing. That is the most upsetting thing in the entire world. Do you know what? There's two upsetting things. What? Firstly, that I just found out that I paid for a table and you only stayed for half an hour. What happened to all that alcohol I paid for? 
I did do a lot of shots and then I gave it to a couple next to us who were in the club. You gave it to someone else? You gave a random couple the whole table? <laughs> no, they had their own table. I gave them the alcohol. That is just crazy. Can I also say something? I organised for this pink limo to happen. And a white one. And a white one? A white and a pink. There were two limos. I what? I paid for two? <laughs> Thank you, Georgie Louie. Oh my God, I paid for two limos. Jamie, stop. Okay, it's hang on a second. Money. I paid for a... I, it's not about, <laughs> it's about I, the experience. Oh my God. I paid for this limo, this surprise limo, this amazing pink limo that you drive around Paris and going to the Alpha Tower, all this kind of stuff. And Sophie came back and I was like... You like the surprise? She was like, oh my God, it's the best. But I was like, how good a surprise was it? Sophie went, I knew about it. I was like, are you joking? It wasn't even a surprise. But you you teed it up as though I was going to have Dixie chicks. But honestly, the limo was the highlight of the How day. on earth would I get you Dixie chicks in Paris? You were like, if this pulls off, like how was it going to pull off? Limos are very accessible. But I am so grateful. It was honestly the highlight of the trip. But you made out. So if well, I can I, I'll tell you a surprise that nearly happened. What? Dixie Chicks? No, not Dixie Chicks. So it turns out... Eva Longoria. It turns out some people listen to the podcast. And <laughs> I... And shout out to... Shout out to EMI because they, they were just wicked. They tried to make this happen. It was going to be wicked. Um, I got a call from Lewis Capaldi's agent saying, we're going to try and get him to the wedding as a surprise for you. He can't do it, but... <laughs> Why would you... Do that. He can't. He can't. No, I actually feel like crying now. I'm really not happy about that. Yeah, it, it unfortunately it can't happen, which is really upsetting. Well, thanks for letting me know. Yeah, because he's me. doing, he's doing, he's obviously promoting his tour. But I got a call from his agent saying we would really like to try and get Lewis there. And I had this whole plan that I was going to say, and Sophie and I was going to do my speech. At the end of the speech, I was going to say, and I have one more surprise for you. Please welcome. Louis Capaldi, and then he's going to start singing. But it's, it's not its not happening. It's the biggest flop I've ever heard, isn't it? <laughs> Thanks for just, like, letting me down. It's not letting you down. Well, who else are you getting then? Dixie Chicks? I don't know why you keep getting... Are the Dixie Chick Chicks alive? Like, they are, I don't know if they're oh. alive still. Are they alive? They are alive and kicking. <laughs> they, yes. Where are they performing next? Nashville, probably. I think <laughs> they got... Can't, they, were, they did something politically wrong and people hate them, but I love them. <laughs> Okay, what else happened on the Hendu? Give it to me. So, first night, you're drunk, you go home. I go what? home. Second night, boom, we went to Gigi's. It was so lovely. Okay. I felt like I was going to die in the morning. I said to Georgia, I'm going to fly home. Don't tell anyone. I need to be with Jamie. She was like, no, you're not. I go downstairs. <laughs> I need to be with Jamie. I said, I must go home and fly with, be with Jamie. I wasn't I wasn't going to take a train straight on the flight. <laughs> night. I looked at them. I was like, it can't happen. <laughs> You looked at flights yeah, on your yeah, own yeah. hand. And I wasn't going to tell anyone. I said, I'm going to slip out and you tell everyone that I've had to go. Sorry. You were going to Houdini everyone at your own hand. I've never, ever felt that hungover in my entire life. It that was bad? Really, really awful. But she held the four. On my stag the second day was the worst it's hangover. It's not about you. Okay. Oh, yeah, I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah, okay. Yeah, okay. Continue. Yeah. I get to Soho House. Mm -hmm. I fueled myself with tequila shots. Georgie what Leroux. time is this? 12. Oh, it's all right. I had a plate of bacon before. Delicious. I tried to eat the... That's because you're vegan, right? <laughs> Oops. <laughs> Do you know what the best thing about this it podcast, which I love more than anything, is that throughout this period of whenever we've been doing the podcast, you've been vegan to pescatarian to full meat eater, and then you're like, you still pretend you're vegan sometimes. Oh, I'm literally like a carnivore. Yeah, I'm you like, honestly eat so much meat. It's because I deprive myself of it for so long, and I'm like, gobble, gobble, gobble. Yeah, you love it. Okay, continue. We... Shaky, shaky, couldn't listen to anyone. Everyone's it. Shaky, shaky. I was shaky. Oh, you were shaking. Okay. Yeah, everyone's voices were like piercing through me. I was like, got ready, went to Gigi's for lunch. It was so lovely. What did you have? Um, burrata wrapped in. Well, I wrapped mine in brazola. <sighs> wow. It was delicious. Truffle pizza, so much Truffle food. overrated, but fine. Get out of here. Okay. It was so much fun. We had a little singer. Your, your nickname was Tequila Mouse. Yeah. Because you were drinking so much tequila. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Did you, you played a Mr. and Mrs. game? Oh, and then I got a kebab, my first kebab. You, you, that was your first ever kebab? Yeah, but it was falafel. I didn't get the meat because it looked like... But that's not a kebab. Well, I still had the wrap with the kebab and I got some chips. Where did you get it from? A kebab shop. Oh my God. I and then I walked home. Wow, it's like you were at uni. The biggest surprise is I came home to the zap order that you ordered. <laughs> Oh, what's that? <laughs> oh, God, if you dare. No, no. 
if you dare. <laughs> Especially not with our lovely wedding planner. I, I can't. I won't say it. But that is the funniest example. Let's just say, <laughs> no. maca is my, is in my smoothies. I've got this superfood and it it does something to your libido. That's all I'm going to say. So if you've got a low libido, start taking some maca and that's all there is to it. Okay. No, I don't know. That's all there is to it. <laughs> That's all there is to it. Is that all there is to it? Yep. Okay, all None right. this audience. No, 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 no. <laughs> all right, honey, we'll leave it as that. Listen, I'm glad you had fun. I'm glad you had the best time ever. It sounds glorious. I tell you what, shall we go into our favourite part of the episode? Oh, let's do it. It's time for... Listeners' Messages. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for listening to messages. As always, hey, you can just send them in to um, our Instagram at Nillywed's Podcast or email them contact at nillywedspodcast.com. We get so many. Hi, Jamie. Sorry, Sophie. This 100% is for Jamie only. Oh, oh okay. Here we go. Here we go. Offended. Jamie, I am slightly concerned that you have double booked the spare room in your villa. What? Huh? What? You told Spencer he could stay... You told Spencer he could stay in the spare room on the previous app of new, Newlyweds. Yeah. Now my concern here, here is that on your last episode of Private Parts, you also told Tom Lucy he could stay in the spare room. News to me, sister. Tom Lucy that he could stay in the spare room in the villa. Please tell me you have two spare rooms and you have not mugged Spencer off again. Again. <laughs> again. <laughs> what was that? Please tell me you have two spare rooms and you have not mugged Spencer off again. What are you going to okay. do? No, but I can't stop. Okay. What are you going to do about this? Who gets the room if there is only one room? You should really manage yourself better. Sorry, I'm Sophie. Jess. P.S. Love you both. Jess, I'm going to tell you right now that, hey, Liz, we've got a lot of space. Tom Lucy is coming out for a day before when people aren't there. And then he's moving into his hotel. Jamie, honestly, you, you, I just don't... I, Hang on, honey. You need to shut that mouth of yours because you're inviting Tom, Dick and Sally to our wedding. You have invited so many people. Uh, my family. No, you, 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 Lucy Lips sometimes and you start like inviting people. Lucy Lips knows exactly who's staying in my villa. Some of my bridesmaids I can't even stay in there because you're inviting Tom, Dick and Sally. No, I'm not. I'm, are you joking? We know who's staying in there and Tom, Dick and Sally are not going. Spencer is staying in the villa. Of course Spencer's staying in the villa and Tom Lucy I love so he can no, stay No, Tom there. Lucy's not. He's staying in a hotel. He's just spending one night when no one else is there. Oh, fine. What, just me and Tom Lucy? Yeah, me, you, Tom Lucy. Lovely romantic evening. <laughs> we have another listener's message, uh, which is a simple drug swap gone wrong. Please keep anonymous. My female friend and male friend stayed in my spare bedroom and her dad gave him a Viagra, not knowing he was going to sleep with his daughter. Turns out the dad was drunk. He actually gave him laxatives. <gasps> Why did they were in the I... middle of the act and he literally exploded with poo in the spare room, which was my sister's bedroom, but she was away at uni. Firstly, it's so weird that dad gave him Viagra to sleep with his daughter. Like if dad pops you a Viagra and goes, hey, give her a good time, I would literally <laughs> disown my own father. My mum had no clue and I invited these people back to mine as it was three in the a.m. He stayed in my house while she was so drunk. She slept in the room full of poo. Oh! <laughs> He told me about it and I was so tired and drunk but had to stay up and evacuate the house and scrub the bedroom before my mum got up at 7am to go to get my sister back from uni. I was all clear until two weeks later my sister found a sock down the side of the bed and she thought the sock was a literal shit. Jack, oh my god, picking this one is outrageous. So can I just ask a question? The father of the bride did not give the son the Viagra, right? I got that wrong. Yes, my female friend and my male friend stayed in the spare bedroom and her dad gave him a Viagra. That's just really weird. Oh my God. That is outrageous. That's horrible. Okay, next one. Okay, we got another one. You ready for the soap? Sure. After hearing about the story of the dad walking in on that girl having sex, it reminded me of my own story. Could it be worse? I'm a lesbian and I haven't told my parents, but it's pretty obvious to be honest. Anyway, my female friend came round and we started experimenting with new... Oh my God, I can't think I can read this. I can't wait. My female friend came round and we started experimenting with new double-ended dildos. <laughs> we were getting into it when suddenly I think I possibly thrusted too intensely and it jammed into my friend so hard she let out a big scream. Suddenly we could hear footsteps coming up the stairs. We both panic, but she's in a lot of pain. 
<laughs> rolling around on the bed completely naked like a newborn puppy. You I'm urging puppy. her to get some clothes on <laughs> as the footsteps are getting louder. She keeps rolling. I turn to put my trousers on quickly and urge my friend to do the same. As I put my first leg through, I slip and fall face first into my mirror. I oh, then let out a scream louder than my friends. I suddenly hear my stepdad call my name in worry and immediately opens the door. What he saw next could only be described as what looked like a battle scene from Gladiator. His daughter, half naked, with one leg in her trousers, lying by a mirror holding her bruised face, the giant dildo abandoned on the bed like a used weapon, and my innocent friend fully naked on the bed. In that moment, my friend panicked and rolled directly off to the side of the bed with a loud thud. Hit the ground, my stepdad quickly shut the door and we never spoke about it again. A week later, my mum got back from holiday and gave him a big smirk in the living room. She had heard the news. I went bright red and without saying anything, she gave me a massive hug and she said, I already knew you like girls. Maybe next time take it easy with the toys when your stepfather's in the house. Why does that give me goosebumps? We both belly laughed. <laughs> so a happy ending after all. Oh, I honestly am strange. I get goosebumps at the weirdest things. That's a lovely story. Isn't that sweet? Albeit quite graphic, but it's a lovely ending. It's just quite an aggressive story at the same yeah, time. Yeah, but look, happy ending now. Oh, you'll tag it. You just, you just chill out on the toys. Imagine that. Oh, like you were talking to me. I was like, oh. No. Okay, right. honey, you ready for the next one? It's anonymous, so please okay. give us anonymous. Otherwise, you'll have the first nearly red's divorce. <laughs> when I was dating my now husband, we told each other we wanted to be completely honest and open with everything in hope of a long-lasting, loving relationship. However, this resulted in some weird-ass stories being shared. One day I asked him what the weirdest situation he'd been in, but wasn't expecting the answer he gave. He said once he got a phone call from his childhood best friend at 2am saying he would send an address and that he had to get over right away as it was an emergency. When he arrived, he realised some sort of weird orgy had taken place as not only was his friend naked when opening a stranger's front door, but he was also accompanied by three other naked men and women in doggy <laughs> position on a coffee table. Oh no, no. Oh my God. His friend was panicking and said, I'm so sorry, but we're all off our tits and we can't get it out. <laughs> my husband looked over and saw that the emergency was to retrieve... What? Was to retrieve a Sky Remote out of a stranger's asshole. <laughs> oh my God. This was a while back, so we're talking old school, the big wide fuckers, I remember them. <laughs> wide sky remote with the rubber handle. Inside a woman's rectum. I'm so sorry. The poor girl was sweating with tears in her eyes, pleading him to remove the sky. <laughs> After, why would you ask your mate? Why would you phone your mate out to do that? After 20 minutes and a pair of pliers with an audience of naked drunk men, he managed to remove the remote from her arse. A pair of pliers. With, with his pro prognosis being, I think what happened was the rubber handle caused friction with the rim of her ass and caused a blockage. <laughs> Still the worst is a baked potato. No, the worst <laughs> is the wine bottle. That's... No, the worst is the Granny Smith apple. <laughs> Just looking like a tennis ball. <laughs> with the spine as well, the store. Also going, what is that? <laughs> That's the best. Imagine here. What is that? <laughs> Pretending it felt nice as well. Like, Ooh, oh. <laughs> um, so on the things up bums, we've had a bunch more messages. I thought we'd do a final round. Of oh, things up bums. Jack, you love these God, ones. Jack's got a fetish for things Listen, up yeah. the bum. No, I haven't. We've been sent a lot of messages. And I think it's only fair that we read some of them out. Okay, Jackie. All this right. Last round. Go on, okay, Jackie. last round. Okay, last round. Okay. Dawn has said she's seen a toilet Dawn. brush. She works in any toilet brush with the brush end, razor blades, a football, a football trophy. <laughs> no, what? This, this is this is cause for ambulance, surely. This is cause for ambulance. <laughs> Dia or Dia said she saw a full bottle of cowpile up there. Wonder what flavour. <laughs> <laughs> Alicia said she, they found an animal. Don't she didn't describe what animal? An Hamster. eel. Ham an eel. 
I want Hampstead, it's true. The people do do that. Yeah. Ruby says she works in A&E. Said, she said it's all true and the excuses are always the same, which is they fell on it. <laughs> <laughs> and lastly, Harvey says, when I worked in trauma department a few years ago, we took a chap to theatre to remove a butternut squash from his ass, Not once, but twice on separate occasions. Oh, God, people are... Absolutely. Talking about getting your fingers burned twice. Like, you do it once and you go, I could do that again. Like, why on a, a butternut squash? Also, like, surely these people have problems going to the loo. Like, their bums must be so big, they can't hold anything in. <laughs> like, that would stress. Like, a butternut squash is, there's no... Yeah, but you're, 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 that's not... They would just, if they needed the loo, it's just slopping straight out, isn't it? <laughs> what it's got to be said, it is. A razor, that's, that's a murderer. Did you say murderer. slopping straight well, no, out? No, oops, sorry. That's not what happens to me. <laughs> Cut this out, no. <laughs> what on earth? No, no, Why on I, earth would it happen to you? I, no, no. The when have you been putting butternut squashes right, at Right, delete, 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 abort mission. <laughs> abort mission. That's what he should have done with the butternut squash. Okay, we have a lovely little jingle for our Propose the Pod, and this week it's from Mrs. Gunnell. <laughs> Mm, not one of the best. Uh, we have a proposed the pod uh, who is from Chloe who says, uh, so over the last four months, I have been training for the Paris London Marathons. Every Monday is my long run and I always looked forward to the first hour as I would listen to your podcast and laugh away so hard that people would be staring at me thinking that I had problems. Anyways, having completed Paris on the 2nd of April, I oh, then damn. went and did London Marathon last week. I had saved up two episodes of your podcast to listen to. And Wednesdays We Drink Wine as well. <sighs> Big shout out to that pod. A girl comes up to me while I was running and starts running alongside me and thanked me for running for St. Richard's Hospice as her mum used to used it when she passed away six months ago. She had seen me laughing while I was listening to Jamie's stag do and asked what I was running to. I said nearly weds and she started crying as she said that her and her mum used to listen to it last year before her passing and as she the daughter was getting married. This year, we then proceeded to talk about your podcast while I was running so under so much heavy breathing and how many laughs it provided over the last 12 months. So thank you for the last year. And although my proposed the pod turned out to be us chatting about it for 4K, it kept me going through my training. So thank you both so much, oh, Chloe. Oh, that's so lovely. Isn't that amazing? And congratulations on your marathon. That's amazing. That is amazing. That's amazing. I love that one. I really love that one too. Um, Producer Jack, has anyone else asked us anything else? Yeah, a lot of people have been asking whether you forgot to bury a sausage we on did. your wedding day because it rained. We yes. forgot, honey. But the rain added to it, but Spain will be buried. We're going to bury a sausage in Spain. I'm burying chorizos everywhere. It, 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 what, is it a Spanish or Irish tradition? I can't remember. Irish. I think it's an Irish tradition to bury a sausage. So we're going to be burying a sausage before the wedding. Yeah, yeah. What type of sausage are we going to pick? I want of each, like a, a saucisson, a chorizo... Richmond, I'll bring them Frankfurt. We'll okay. just we'll cover bases. All right, honey, I like it. Listen, um, guys, we want to say a big thank you to every single person who keeps writing in and all the proposed the pods. We listen to every single one. We read through all the messages. And listen, we're so close to the wedding now. We're so excited. So please just keep sending them in. They make us laugh. They really oh, they make. Know, Jamie. Okay, all right, all right. Well, you know where to send them to. At, slide into our DMs at Nilly Wes Podcast or send us send us an email contact at nillywespodcast dot com. So if that's the end of listeners messages. Okay, so if we have a um, really exciting, fun bit right now. We do. By the way, before um, we go into this bit, I do want to give a huge shout out to Stanley's, who provided us an amazing lunch after our no, wedding. It was delicious. It was, it was so great. So Stanley's is on the King's Road. Um, after our wedding ceremony at Chelsea Registry Office, we walked across the road and went to Stanley's. We had amazing lunch food. It was delicious. So shout out to those guys because they really put on a show. And boy, oh boy, did they allow us to drink some drinks. Yeah, they, it's great. It's such a great venue. It was just a delicious venue. Hey, and also really exciting because one of our friends who was at that wedding, at the ceremony, who'd one can't... One of our best friends, who's very talented, who was at that wedding, is going to join us today on our podcast. Yeah, so she couldn't come to the actual wedding, um, but she uh, came Not to... the actual the... wedding. She can't come to the Spanish wedding. Can't come to the Spanish wedding, so she came to the ceremony. She has an amazing business called Pinky Studios, and she is writing, because of one, on one of our wedding favours we wanted to do, she is writing poems 
individually for each of our guests. So we decided to bring her on the podcast and discuss poems and all these kind of stuff today. So please welcome to the podcast one of our friends, Tally Gilbert. Tally Hackett. No, Tally Gilbert. Thank you. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's, uh, well, you said maiden name and then married name. I did. Well done about I that. I prefer my maiden name. Yeah. Tally In, Hackett. Sorry. But I, but <laughs> I find it hard, right, when people get married. Yeah. Because I've known you for so, I mean, years and years and years, since what, like 15 or whatever it is. Mm. Um, how, uh, how old were you guys when you actually did meet? I don't know, 15, 16, 17, yeah. around then? Yeah. 15, 16, 17, then. <laughs> so well, they're uh, quite different ages. It's like 17 years ago, I would say. Yeah, a really long time. Um, Tao, listen, we're super excited to have you on because... Thank you so much for having me. Oh my God, we're so excited. Terrible so... imposter syndrome. <laughs> no, why are you going... Like... And they don't have imposter syndrome. Before, by the way, before we kick things off, I, <laughs> we, Sophie and I owe you the biggest thank you. Uh, for a biggest... few reasons. Firstly, because you're just... Um, you're one of the greatest friends to us. Um, you're doing an amazing, what we call wedding favor mm. for our wedding we were going to talk about. Um, but also when Sophie and I were going through our really anxious time, typically Sophie going through a really anxious moment. It was very bad. Yeah, <laughs> of, yeah of, of marriage and stuff like that. You know, we, met, we went for breakfast with you and... Well, I walked into that cafe yeah and i thought someone had died bear in you... mind tally sorry just to cut you off is uh, you, how many months pregnant very pregnant very no, pregnant no, baby in five and weeks. at that point you were really badly pregnant with morning sickness yeah vomiting and feeling dizzy. terrible yeah. and i walked in and go, no i just walked in and you both i thought someone had died <laughs> <laughs> or that you think we weren't getting married, which was sort of then spoken about. And made that me was close. actually on the cusp at the I know, at that but point. I do, it, to be honest, it's so nice how you guys are honest about the anxiety surrounding a wedding because I have friends, we have friends yeah. who hated every minute, like yeah. absolutely hated it, and sort of ran down the arms like, oh my God, thank God, that's over. Why does that happen though? I don't know. I mean, I, I didn't really mind. My mum, like, really took over, like, really took over. So I was sort of just Sorry. quite backseat, which was actually great. And yeah. Alex was very, whatever you want, which was also quite great. Well, you know, that's where it differed with us, I think. <laughs> Bridezilla. Are you joking? Groomzilla. <laughs> Are you joking, Groomzilla? But I did, I have really struggled. I would say yeah. I've really, and you know, I've spoken to Tal loads about it. Like, mm. I've really not felt myself no. since, which is quite <laughs> weird. Oh, I've, got such, <laughs> I've got such bad indigestion from being pregnant. Did you just bark yeah, sorry. Like? <laughs> no, I burped. Sorry. <laughs> I'm so sorry. Very me anyway, but... It is. I don't have any Rennie. Like, fuck. <laughs> <laughs> oh anyway. my god, I love you. But you haven't. So, so you haven't found yourself. And then, but weirdly enough, to help, having that breakfast with you when you basically said, "Look, everything's going to be cool. This is natural. This is normal." Yeah. Uh, so, and I walked away from that, and we just felt different people. We were mm. like, we just wish we could have Tally to hug us all the time. <laughs> yeah, we. Yeah, but I did. think it is. You've got to say like, this isn't. You're not going to enjoy every minute of it, and some mm. of it is shit and lots of people try and make the whole thing about themselves you're also documenting the whole thing hard like it's a lot so i'm not it's really surprised i wasn't that surprised yeah um, I, I get it i get it i think that but i'm glad you didn't cancel oh my the god best thing that <laughs> i really me. never wanted to i just thought <laughs> sophie <laughs> was just like i used to i was like this is There's gonna still be still time <laughs> no, maybe don't say that no, but the best thing tal told me to do was because as you know I imagine you're marrying someone else <laughs> Yeah, just close, close your, your eyes, eyes and think of England. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but you said, you know, what would be your sort of dream wedding? And I wanted like a really intimate wedding. Mm. And you said sort of like, you know, make the London wedding, the civil ceremony. That will be your day. And yeah. that sort of gave me such a pep in my step. And I... Mm. Pe a what? Pep in my step. Is that not the same? I don't know. She's always Tally, says this. I just come on, nod. you know me well enough to know that I have my own language. Pepper, yeah. pepper in a step. <laughs> a little pepper in her She's step. She's like, what? A little pepper in the step. But Tao, you're, you're married. You've been married how many years now? I've been married... For, no, fuck, I don't know. Three, <laughs> four. No, four years. No, because nearly four years. Because it was when I was just getting with Jamie. Yeah. And you weren't at my wedding, which is really sad. Because we just, I know. But we, yeah. But were you married four years? We with I was there at the engagement uh, when yeah, when he yeah, proposed. We engaged. You and Usher. I was an Usher. The whole thing was Wait, amazing. You were there when he yeah, we were in OC Island. Yeah. Yeah. It was a surprise. God, I wish I knew. You. Obviously, it was a fucking surprise. What a stupid <laughs> thing to say. <laughs> but, no, I but, didn't know. But your love kicking him in the shins. But your love story. I just before you know before we get into the <laughs> wedding favors and that your love story is amazing. So can you tell we us? Yeah, we've got a good story, haven't we? Whenever I tell anyone who I meet. 
wherever people are always like that's a good story can so, you can you tear it up for us we were best friends for seven years we were retaking some of our a levels in um london mm -hmm. and we met and he'd never had a friend who was a girl yeah. he went to all boys school and was quite boy and shy yeah. and we became best friends and we were best friends for seven years we slept in the same bed every night we shagged all each other's friends it was just never like that ever like really really never um and then we were going to a birthday and we got on the train and Alex had like seven of those mini bottles of red wine and was like cross-eyed <laughs> and purple Literally purple. <laughs> quite like you. Quite Jamie. I'm probably quite red now as well. But. And um, we, I was singing a guy and I had my phone and I was doing this on my phone. And he was like, what are you doing? I said, well, I've taken this picture. I'm not really one to send nudes. I've never really sent nudes. I don't know why I'm saying this. I don't think anyone really cares, but... Um, I'm literally uh, in. I, I'm in as well. I, I'd taken a picture that was, you know, quite not like... I'm not talking like flap spread. I'm like, it's, it was like... <laughs> Close flat. It was subtle. It was classy. <laughs> <laughs> Your vagina was smoking a cigarette and it was like... <laughs> it, was looking, it was looking really classy. It, was, no, like, it was, yeah. actually wasn't of anything. It was, it, just, was it was classy. It was nice. It was tasteful. Yeah, it's just a if good it got thing. leaked, I wouldn't care. <laughs> yeah, it, yeah. I'd be proud. <laughs> um, it's me and my heyday. Um, and anyway, he was like, show me. And I said, no, that is so weird. You're like my brother. We're on the train. He said, no, come on, just show me. And I'll tell you whether to send it. I never sent a picture like that. I showed him. It was to a guy who's a friend of ours who I was seeing because we saw each other's friends. We, you know. Mm -hmm. And Alex took my phone. He goes, is that you? And I said, yeah, that's, that's me. And he was like, oh, sometimes I forget you're a girl. <laughs> and I was like, cool, thanks. I guess that's a compliment. Anyway, fast forward to that night. We get really drunk. And we end up getting together. Um, and we, <laughs> we woke up the next morning and did it again and my brother was in the next room and he was like this is incest because we were so close and it kind of just kept happening we lived together we were mm. such best friends um and it's such a funny one because we had to work really hard to make it become a proper relationship because we yeah. we skipped all the dating and yeah. the court you know you guys started as best yeah, friends. yeah 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 like it is really weird and we had seven years under our belts and when we told everyone i remember going to the pub with jemima and saying me and alex slept together and she, no one could believe it. Everyone was like, what? And you know, everyone you thought it was a... Jemima, our close friend, huh? I, I think I do remember when it started happening. I, I do. But everyone was, everyone had a massive opinion on it. Of course. Well, you guys, mm -hmm. like... Yeah. Oh, it's um, never going to work. Never was... going to work. If you guys don't work, you know, you guys have been friends the longest and then what's everyone else going to do? And I was like, oh God, I don't know. But anyway, we kept sleeping together, kept sleeping together. And then eventually sort of fell in love. Yeah, it's and amazing. Then, Ended up getting married, and but it, it replicates what happened to Sophie and, you're and I. Just such mm. a team, yeah. We're really, but like, best yeah. friends is an amazing foundation. I must say, I think I would recommend. <laughs> I'm not. It's quite a bold statement. Shag your best friend, but like, yeah. just give it a go. Yeah, just what give it a go. What, like, what <laughs> I mean, the thing is, is that there is a lot to lose, of course. And I think with us, we, it was quite an unusual situation. Like Alex w was a modelling really successfully, mm. and I think. It's quite. It was a really strange time. He was so conditioned through being in that industry for a mm. decade, and like as we all are, you open a magazine, it's like Instagram, that's beautiful, yeah. that's hot, that's like ten out of ten. Like she's rank, she's not. I mean, his ex girlfriend was a supermodel. Mm. The one before was like, you know, I'm got tits, I'm curvy, mm. I, <laughs> quite a big deal. <laughs> <Tally. laughs> Shut out your no, but support. do you know what I mean? And he said that he had such conflict in his head because he was so attracted to me, but he'd worked in this industry so for 10 years. Well, you know, you, I, we worry about our children. You open a magazine now and you're like... Is there well, I don't know anyone who looks like that. Yeah, yeah, I know, I know. And our friends are all pretty... You know, we've got so many beautiful friends and Tell, I know, friends I, inside out. But it was, so, it was a very strange... But it's amazing. And did he confide in you? Sorry. Yeah, he I'm, told I, me. You are he in. Did. No, he did. He did. He, I remember us speaking about it and he was like, I like fancy you so much. But, but he's been conditioned. Yeah. To... It was really weird. It was very strange. Yeah. <laughs> but then you guys fell in love and it's amazing. And, it, and it's the same, same with Sophie and I because... Um, 
you know, we Sophie, you, you and I did start off as friends. We started sharing a bed together. Sophie's a model and you're yeah, not. Yeah, Sophie's a model and I'm not. <laughs> and, and then... I was like, fuck, I'm conditioned to fancy really tall, dark, <laughs> and handsome. Right? Like, you can't yeah. know what I mean. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. This, like, four-foot ginger. <laughs> <laughs> but it's... Used it. <laughs> oh, my God. Out it's of nowhere. Hot, hot, hot. Out of nowhere. Out of nowhere, that's getting mm. cut. But it's true. And then, you know, we start, we, we, we hooked up and then we we're like, oh, this is just whatever fun. Mm. And I remember speaking to a friend of mine. Um, I remember I went to South America with my great friend, Alexi. Um, and he said, who are you? And I said, this guy. And he said, oh, is it serious? And I went, ah, it's not serious. We're just friends. Mm, I remember, no, I, but it was at that point. And, but, but you, but also you just don't reason. And then subconsciously it was, it was just becoming deeper and deeper and deeper. And then, mm. you know, we end up getting married like you guys and mm. it's just the best thing in the world. I also think you two have the same thing that Alex and I do where we do both have pasts and we are, we have got with people who are friends and it's overlapped and we kind of made a conscious decision when we got together that the past is the past yeah because mm -hmm. you have so many like i have so many situations with friends or like not so much now but when we were younger they'd be like oh well his ex-girlfriend was there and or he's kissed her and you just have to let it go it's like the biggest yeah. advice for any relationship i would just say you've got to move forward from it because it really pulls you back and it's let the past be the past yeah. but i do think that is that's really like relevant to the friendship thing because if you are Agreed. just based on like attraction there is a jealousy yeah but if you've got that sort of like soul uh, connection yeah. and friendship yeah. hello guru that's yeah that's, that's so true why that's true like, you, you don't have because you're like well they don't have what we have no you know they can be it yeah. might be 10 times better or whatever but it doesn't matter you know. we don't have what also, we have it's very attractive to actually not care I'm not saying pretend you don't care and of course if you have any issues with anything in a relationship always raise it because communication is so key mm. but we'd walk into a bar and a girl would look at Alex and I'd I'd start laughing and I'd be like have you shagged her <laughs> <laughs> and he'd sort of smile at me and I'd just laugh I yeah. literally would laugh and he was like it's confidence is so attractive like yeah you know and, it, that's, and it's based on a friendship base i totally get it yeah and and tell also you know you have this amazing business now and this is what's so exciting for our yeah. wedding favor um your business is called pinky it's pinky called studio pinky studio and uh what you do is well you can explain it better well i've written poems all my life as you know for every party event wedding funeral 30th hen you name it, I've probably written it. Um, <laughs> and I do do them for fun. And, you know, it'd be someone's birthday and someone would say, oh, Tal, are you going to write one of your poems? And I'd, yeah, of course, of course. And then I'd read them out like a speech. And everyone was always so kind and um, said they were great. And, you know, you sort of like, oh, okay, thanks. And then I decided that I actually needed to make something of it. It was actually my sister-in-law. Um, but we had this conversation and she said, just do it. And yeah. I sort of was like, well, I couldn't do it for people I don't know. That's ridiculous. You know, I, no, no, no. You know, all this imposter syndrome, as I say, which is massive for so everyone, many, everyone, everyone. Yeah. Um, and then I launched the Instagram sort of overnight. I made an Instagram page. I was like, you know, what do I have to lose? I'll make an Instagram page. If no one follows it or no one wants me to do them a poem, then I tried. Anyway, it was so nice and lots of lovely people. I didn't ask anyone. I think sometimes it's nice when it's organic. I didn't ask anyone to post anything or do anything. Yeah, I yeah, yeah. You, you just did it. And then got lots of really lovely inquiries and started writing poems to people I'd never met. So we'd do a questionnaire. We have a phone call and a chat and, you know, I'm quite easy to talk to. Yeah. And they tell me what they want. Like I've had brides and wanting to do surprise speeches and I've got best men wanting help with their best man speech. Um, someone for a 35th wedding anniversary, like, just everything you could imagine. And it's so lovely. You chat to these people and I sort of say, oh yeah, well, okay, I'll send you a bespoke questionnaire. You fill it in and then get it back to me. And then from that questionnaire, I then create a poem. Every single person, we have 200 guests or whatever mm. it is. And every single person at the, the wedding now has a little poem about them on their table place. So when yeah. they come to the table, they lift up thing and there's a poem about them. Mm. And you and I had a conversation. You said, right, okay, we need to talk through these family members. Okay, give me four things about them that yeah. is nice and reminds you of them and stuff like that. So I said, okay, they... Um, you were like, they Uncle love Sam, road rage, <laughs> ginger, small, competitive. I was like... 
Perfect. I'll try and put a positive spin on all of that. It was quite. Um, and then, yeah, and some of the people you don't know. Yeah, yeah, no, no, yeah. <laughs> that and was you're good. like, that was I was good. like, oh, maybe they're Sophie's list. No, no, definitely my list, but I don't know them. I was like, <laughs> yeah, love good. it. I can't wait. Can you give us a little snippet of something that you've done or that we might receive? Or So, uh, I think this was one I wrote for Alex's 30th. We actually had just got engaged the night before you were there. Okay, so this is your husband, Alex. Alex. He'd never had a girl who was just a friend. Little did we know what would happen in the end. He'd walk me back home, pushing his BMX, back to his parents' house for our daily Mario Kart sesh. We became inseparable pretty fucking quickly. Everywhere I went, he would be there with me. We bonded over music. I showed him all the hits. And then we'd go out raving and got completely off our tits. <laughs> And it just sort of oh like my goes on like that, but God. it's just, it's Tell sweet. That it's so good. It's quite hard to find one that wasn't a bit rude. Yeah, but rude I did, is fine. I did 35 poems for a lunch that my brother organised. Yeah. You were there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was amazing. I had my little jam pot when I loved it. Yeah, but yours was very, quite yours PG. Yours quite tame, yeah. Some were not, some were not PG. Some are literally like... I know, I think some of the boys later in the night had terrible anxiety worrying about, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> does everybody think this? <laughs> Yeah, but it's so, so good. Tao, um, listen, we are overwhelmed with joy that you're doing that for the wedding. We're so, so, so excited. Thank you. You're just the greatest. You're Thank the you for best. supporting oh, us. Guys. Thank, Thank you for you being so there much. for us and we love and you. we're proud Thank of you. you. Proud of you too. Hey, well. and when the baby well comes... Well done for making it. Well Jesus done. Christ, it was touch and go. <laughs> it was touch and go. <laughs> it was touch and go. <laughs> Honey, if you were going to write a poem for me, uh, what would you say? Oh, well, don't put me on as well. Go on, give it a go. Uh, Jamie Lang. Jamie... Lying. Jamie Lang is a peng. No, I don't it's like that. It's just the it. worst poem I've ever I don't like doing that. Come on, shush. All right, honey. Well, listen, um, that's the uh, the end of the episode. <gasps> well, we got one next week, so don't you fret, kiddos. Oh, we're not going to fret anywhere. Hey, and listen, how many weeks away are we from... The... I don't want to know that because that's, you know, I'm being calm, but we don't need to... I'm going to tell you. I'm going to tell you. Three, two... We are... Three. 20 days... Boy. 20 days oh, away no, from no, our that gives a little wedding. bit of a flutter in my chest. It's 20 days away from the you wedding. You said it once, no more times. Honey, 20 days. Uh, do you want to punch? Oh. <laughs> 20 days away from... I will punch you. Okay, Okay, all okay right. if you're getting married. No, 20 days, Shut honey. up, Jamie. If you're getting married. 20 days. If you're getting married, uh, we'll be getting a divorce if you say it one more time. As always, at the end of the episode, well, not as always, but our new thing is that we have someone wishing us a good luck for um, our wedding. And last week we had my sister, and this week we have somebody else. Jamie, Sophie, hi, hope you're well. I've just been asked to send you a little video note. Um, video note. And I wanted to quote a saying from the late, great Robin Williams, who's talking to Matt Damon, who's just found the love of his life. And I think it's really, really relevant and really important um, for where you are. About to get married, about to start the journey of your life, build a family. And he turns to Matt Damon and he says, let me tell you, sport, you're not perfect. And the girl you met, she won't be perfect. What's important is that you're perfect for each other. And I can tell you 100% you two are perfect for each other. Very, hey, very Patrick, we love you. Thank you so much. Hey, listen, everybody, don't worry. We're going to be back next week with another episode. If you want to send us any voice notes, any stories, anything at all, please do send them to at nillywedspodcast.com or slide into our DMs at nillywedspodcast. If you're getting married... Good luck. If you're getting engaged... Go great. <laughs> go great. <laughs> go great. Go great. If you get it. If you're getting a divorce... Happy days. <laughs> If you're thinking about proposing. Go do it. And if you're single. You rock. Okay, we love you, we everybody. Love you. We'll Bye. see you next week. Goodbye. I'm delirious. Today. Well done. <laughs>